Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to a read aloud of today's science ebook titled Oceans Inside Out. As needed for today's science lesson, Unit 4, Lesson 8, called Oceans. So, what goes on in the oceans, and what changes can oceans cause? Let's read to find out. We're reading pages 4 through 27 in the ebook today. Oceans Inside Out by Robin Johnson. Part 1. What is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is made up of organisms, or living things, the environment in which they live, and their interrelationships, or their relationships between one another. Each plant and animal depends on other living and non-living things in the ecosystem for its survival. Living things are called biotic factors. Non-living things, such as water, sunlight, and air, are called abiotic factors. <clears throat> The plants and animals that survive in an ecosystem depend on the biotic and abiotic factors that exist there. Sizes of Ecosystems Ecosystems can be large or small. Some are as small as puddles, while others are as huge as the deep blue sea. A biome is a large geographical area that contains similar plants, animals, and environments. Oceans, rainforests, and tundras are examples of biomes. So what is an ocean? An ocean is a large area of salt water. Oceanographers divide the water on Earth into five oceans, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian, the Southern, and the Arctic Oceans. So on the map up there you can see Pacific Ocean, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, and Arctic. However, there is really only one huge area of water on Earth. Strong currents carry water from ocean to ocean. They also take some of the plants and animals along for the ride. Let's jump in and look at each marine ecosystem as a whole, then dive deeper into one part of it. So what is a system, an ecosystem being an example of a system? A system is a group of separate parts that work together for a purpose. The abiotic conditions in each part of the ecosystem determine the kind of life that can survive there. Plants, animals, water, temperature, and soil are some of the parts of ecosystems. Each biotic and abiotic factor has a specific and important role that helps the ecosystem function. A healthy ecosystem has many types of plants and animals whose needs are met by the parts of the ecosystem. Ecosystems exist in a delicate balance. A change to just one part of an ecosystem affects all other parts of the ecosystem. Energy in Ecosystems from tiny plants to enormous blue whales, every living thing in an ocean ecosystem needs energy to survive. Energy comes from food. A food chain shows how an organism gets food and how this energy is then passed from one organism to another. Many different organisms rely on a single food chain. So an example of a food chain would be the energy from the sun is used to help grass grow. Grass is then eaten by a dugong, which is a herbivore type of animal, and the dugong in turn may be eaten by a tiger shark, a carnivore. So energy passes from one living thing to the next as one eats the next. The flow of energy. Living things in an ecosystem can be producers, plants, consumers, animals that eat those plants, or other animals, or decomposers, which uh, decompose or break down uh, the bodies of dead plants and animals. Plants have chlorophyll and are called producers because they use energy from the sun to produce their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Animals are consumers. They must eat food to get energy to survive. Primary consumers are animals that eat plants. They are also called herbivores. Manatees and dugongs are large marine herbivores. Secondary consumers, such as sarks and killer whales, are, carn are carnivores that eat animals for food. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Decomposers are organisms that break down dead plants and animal matter. Like nature's recyclers, they put nutrients back into the oceans so that food chains can begin again. Food webs. Energy does not stay in just one food chain. It flows to living things in many other food chains. When two or more food chains connect, they create a food web. A healthy food web provides energy for many species, or types, of plants and animals in an ecosystem. Oceans of Ecosystems 
There are many different ecosystems in the oceans around the world. Some oceans have icy waters all year long, while others are warmed by tropical sunshine. Some oceans have plenty of fish for predators to eat, while others have very little prey. Predators hunt and kill other animals for food. Prey are the animals they catch and eat. In animals in an, all animals in an ecosystem are interdependent, which means they rely on one another and plants for their survival. Many different systems. There are also different ecosystems in different parts of oceans. In some ecosystems, marine animals climb out of the water onto rocky shores each day or live or um, live attached to rocky shores or in small pools of salt water formed by waves splashing. In other ecosystems, animals never leave the murky deep ocean. Suited for salt water. Marine plants and animals have adapted to the abiotic and biotic factors of each ocean ecosystem. To adapt is to change over a long period of time to better suit an environment. All marine plants and animals have adapted to live in salt water. However, different organisms must also adapt to different water temperatures, depths, and pressure, as well as different amounts of sunlight, air, and salinity, or saltiness. Water is always moving, so ocean habitats are always changing in some ways. A habitat is the natural environment where a plant or animal lives. In the zone. Sunlight, an abiotic factor, powers the ocean biome. It shines down on oceans and warms the surface of the water. The sun's rays cannot reach all the way to the bottom of oceans, however. Many parts of the oceans are about 14,000 feet, or 4,267 meters deep. But there are places where there that are more than twice that deep. Oceanographers divide the water column into layers, or light zones. Each zone receives a different amount of light and energy from the sun. The deeper you go, the less light there is. Different organisms have adapted to survive in each zone. Sunny side up. The top layer of the ocean is called the sunlit or photic zone. Photic means light in Greek. Another scientific word we borrow from Greek. The sun bathes the top 656 feet or 200 meters of ocean in sunlight. These warm waters are home to most ocean organisms. The sun shines brightly there, so photosynthesis can take place. With plenty of plants to eat, the sunlit zone is a suitable habitat for many different types of marine animals. Sharks, dolphins, whales, tuna, sea turtles, and other countless and countless other ocean animals make their homes here. Where the sun doesn't shine. Below the sunlit zone is the deep sea. It is a huge, dark, cold area of water. Oceanographers divide the deep sea into two zones. The twilight zone, the second lone right zone right below the sunlight zone, stretches from the bottom of the sunlit zone to 3,300 feet, or 1,006 meters, below the surface. The twilight zone is also called the dysphotic zone, meaning poorly lit zone. It receives a little light, but not enough for photosynthesis to take place. The midnight, or aphotic, meaning no light zone, that's the next one down, continues to the bottom of the ocean. There is pitch black, the water temperature is just above freezing, and the water pressure is high. No plants and very few animals can survive in these waters. Deep Sea Divers Animals that live in the deep sea have adapted to the harsh abiotic conditions. Some, such as sea jellies, octopuses, and squids, have soft bodies that can withstand higher water pressure. Others, such as eels and bristle mouths, have thin, dark bodies that camouflage them in dark waters. Finding Food Many deep-sea predators have large eyes and a strong sense of smell to help them find prey in low light. Some animals migrate up the water column to find food, but most depend on marine snow for energy. Marine snow is a shower of nutrient-rich nutrient -rich detritus that falls from the sunlit zone high above. Bacteria and other ocean decomposers break down the detritus and release important nutrients back into the water. Detritus being a uh, what happens when sea animals die and their bodies decompose and basically turn into dust that sprinkles down to the very bottom of the ocean. That is marine snow that all those animals way down at the bottom uh, munch on. So the cuttlefish is an example of an animal that lives down there, as is the anglerfish. Icy waters. The water at the bottom of all oceans is icy cold. However, in the Arctic Ocean and Southern Ocean, the water on top is even colder. 
In fact, a layer of sea ice covers parts of these oceans all year long. The water freezes because polar oceans are found in the coldest places on Earth. The Arctic Ocean is found in the North Polar Region, and the Southern Ocean surrounds Antarctica down south. Both places have very cold climates. Animals that live in these icy oceans have adapted to the freezing temperatures, like polar bears. Many have layers of fat called blubber to keep them warm. Some have warm feathers or fur. On thin ice. Polar oceans are home to many hardy animals, such as polar bears. Polar bears live on sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. From the ice, they hunt seals, walruses, narwhals, and beluga whales. Polar bears are apex predators. They are at the top of the food chain and have few or no natural predators. Although they do not face predators, polar bears do face another threat. Climate change is melting sea ice in polar oceans. If their habitat shrinks or disappears, polar bears are in danger of dying out. Without apex predators, the populations of other species will grow out of control and disrupt the ecosystem. Temperate oceans. Temperate oceans are found between the polar regions and the tropics. They include parts of the Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, and Pacific Ocean. Temperate oceans have temperate or mild temperatures that change with the seasons. The climate is hot in the summer and cold in the winter. The abiotic conditions in the oceans suit the needs of many plant and animal species. Mix it up. In the summer, the sun heats the surface of temperate oceans and allows many plants to grow. This warm, bright layer of water is separated from the cold, dark water below by the thermocline. The thermocline is an invisible boundary, invisible boundary or dividing line between waters that have very different temperatures. In the winter, the temperature drops and the surface water cools. The thermocline disappears and the surface water mixes with the cold waters below. Deep water contains nutrients that have fallen from the sunlit zone and that algae need to make food. The mixing of water surface of warm surface water with cooler water below brings nutrients back to the surface where photosynthesis takes place. Plenty of fish in the sea. With so many plants and animals to eat, temperate oceans have huge fish populations. They are home to cod, tuna, habit, uh, halibut, haddock, herring, mackerel, salmon, and many other types of fish. Many fish species swim together in large groups called schools. Like that one, that's a big school of fish right there. Swimming in schools helps fish find food and mates and avoid predators. It does not prevent them from being caught, however. Commercial trawlers spot schools of fish and cast huge nets to catch them. Commercial trawlers being big fishing boats. On the rocks. Water from oceans crashes onto the rocky shores. It moves forward and backward throughout the day with the changing tides. Organisms that live in rocky shore ecosystems must adapt to pounding waves, changing temperatures, and varying amounts of water, air, sunlight, and salt. They must protect themselves from predators in the water and on the land. It is a harsh environment in which only the toughest plants and animals can survive. <clears throat> One zone, four parts. The place where the ocean meets the shore is called the intertidal zone. Oceanographers divide the intertidal zone into four parts. The spray zone at the top of the rocks, the high tide zone, the middle tide zone, and the low tide zone at the bottom. As water moves in and out with the tides, different areas are covered with water. A tough life. Different plants and animals have adapted to live in each part of the intertidal zone. The spray zone is mostly dry, and very few plants grow there. The low tide zone is mostly wet, so surf grass, sea lettuce, and other marine plants and algae can grow there. Limpets, barnacles, and mussels are tough creatures that cling or attach tightly to rocks throughout the intertidal zone. They have hard shells that help protect them from predators. Others have strong limbs that grip the rocks and keep them from being washed away. Uh, sea stars are a good example of one of those, or starfish as they may be called. Tropical oceans. Tropical oceans are clear, warm waters found near the equator in the, in the tropics. They include the central parts of the Pacific Ocean and Atlantic Ocean, and most of the Indian Ocean. The climate in the tropics is hot all year, with plenty of sunshine. Little to eat. You might think that warm temperatures and plenty of sunlight would mean great biodiversity in tropical oceans. However, there are few living things in the open waters of these oceans. 
The surface of tropical oceans stays warm and bright all year, so there is a constant thermocline between the surface waters and the cold waters below. The waters never mix, so nutrients remain trapped below the thermocline. Without nutrients, plants cannot produce food. Without producers, there is no food for consumers to eat. Go with the flow. Animals that live in tropical oceans have adapted to small amounts of food in their habitats. Some animals migrate to temperate waters where there is plenty of food. They travel long distances to feed, then return to tropical waters. Some animals follow strong currents to reach cold waters, while others stay in tropical oceans and feed in the currents that pass through the oceans. Others, such as the giant clam, rely on a mutualistic relationship with brightly colored algae to provide food. The currents carry warm water from the equator to the polar regions and bring cold, nutrient-rich water back to the equator. Coral reefs. Now here's where you're going to find uh, most of the life in the oceans. Coral reefs are huge underwater structures that mostly grow in warm, shallow waters on the coasts of tropical oceans. So, uh, tiny, soft-bodied animals called coral polyps make coral reefs. Coral polyps use minerals in the water to build hard, protective skeletons around their bodies. When the coral polyps die, their skeletons remain in the ocean. Over time, the skeletons pile up and form huge, rock-like coral reefs. Groups of living coral polyps, called corals, live at the top of coral reefs. Working together. Like all living things, corals need nutrients to grow. There are few nutrients in tropical oceans, so the plants and animals in coral reefs must work together to survive. Coral polyps and algae have a mutualistic relationship. There's that term again, meaning uh, two animals that help each other survive. Mutualistic relationship that forms the basis of coral reefs. Tiny algae live inside the bodies of coral polyps. This keeps the algae safe from hungry herbivores. The algae use nutrients in the waste of coral polyps to make food, which is eaten by the coral. Sharing and growing. The sharing of nutrients by algae and coral help keeps coral reefs growing and provides a great habitat for many species. Seahorses, barracudas, sharks, hawksbill turtles, pufferfish, sponges, and many other animals find food and shelter among the corals. The animals release nutrients in their waste. Plants and coral reefs use these nutrients to produce more food for the animals to eat. And lastly, sandy shores. Coastal areas have sandy shores made up of tiny grains, or tiny little rocks of sand or crushed shells. They are found on the edges of oceans around the world. Like rocky shores, sandy shores are dangerous places for plants and animals. Crashing waves, changing tides, high tides, and other abiotic factors make them harsh habitats. Changing to survive. Despite the challenges, many plants and animals have adapted to live in sandy shore ecosystems. Some organisms, such as crabs, sandhoppers, and sea snails, live on sandy shores throughout the year. They dig in the sand to hide from predators and to keep from being washed away. Just visiting. Organisms, such as sea turtles and seabirds, live on sandy shores for just part of the year. They find food and build their nests there, but do not stay for long. Sea turtles live mainly in shallow, coastal waters. They graze on seagrass on the seafloor, which helps keep the plants healthy. Seagrass must be kept short so it can grow. Male sea turtles spend their lives in the ocean, but female sea turtles go to sandy shores to lay their eggs. They dig holes in the sand, lay eggs inside the holes, fill them with sand, then return to the sea. The sand hides the eggs from predators, while nutrients from the eggs nourish plants that grow on the beach. Oh, I beg your pardon. This is actually the final portion. Yes. Last portion for today, ocean forests. Kelp forests are thick aquatic forests made of giant brown algae called kelp. The kelp make food by photosynthesis, but unlike plants, have no roots or true leaves. They anchor to the ocean floor with holdfasts. The kelp grow near the shores of cold oceans. Many are found on the west coast of North America. Home in the forest. Kelp forests are full of life. They provide food and shelter for thousands of marine species. Many animals hunt prey and hide from the predators among the long, wavy blades of kelp. Sea otters, sea lions, seals, whales, kelp bass, rockfish, and giant kelpfish are some of the many animals that make their homes in kelp forests. 
Mangrove trees. Mangroves are hardy trees that grow along tropical oceans. Unlike most trees, mangroves have adopted to drink salt water and grow in soil that has little oxygen. Some mangrove species have roots that grow above the ground and take in oxygen from the air. Other species have roots that remove salt from the water. Tropical coasts depend on mangroves. The thick tangled roots of mangrove trees block ocean waves and help prevent coastal erosion. They also provide habitats for tropical plants and animals. Unfortunately, mangrove forests in Southeast Asia and other parts of the world are being destroyed so that people can build fish and shrimp farms in their place.